right, what's going on? Well, quiet market. So uh, it's very interesting to see uh, when uh, the markets start building steam like this. Uh, everybody kind of gets bored, goes to sleep, and then all of a sudden, pow, you get the action you yes. want. I think we're going to get that next week. Which is perfect for you. <laughs> Which is perfect for us because the uh, I, I was t saying on the show today, there's a few things that I really love, and that is when the VIX starts coming down. Yes. And implied volatility on, sto on stocks drops for options. Those options can become extremely cheap, and your risk-reward becomes better than actually holding the equity itself. A lot of times we were watching uh, the VIX at astronomical levels over the last year, and the decay is just monumental. You know, one day you've got a $4 uh, put or call, and the next day you have a $2 one. Yes. Well, it, it's not going to be like that. The, you're, it's, you still have to worry about decay. But this is going to be uh, much, much better than it has been for over a year. So if we can catch the right uh, trade, um, there's going to be a lot of those 10, 25 cent options that can go to a buck or higher. So we'll be looking for that. And of course, uh, last night I finished up working on uh, short positions for the bi-monthly. Uh, part of what I do is try to find stocks that have huge short positions uh, for expiration, then you know every time it goes down, you're going to have somebody that's short wanting to cover. Yes. And when it goes up, you've got a lot of the opportunity for a massive squeeze. And now and you have it, the help of all the Reddit traders. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. You um, know, yeah, I mean, you were onto this way before anyone else. The thing that's going to be intriguing, Dave, is that one of these days they are going to come after one of your stocks, which is going to be hilarious, which is, which is, which is, is. heaven on earth for everyone, folks, by the way. <laughs> well, I've got one that's in a commodity market today that's got 12 days to cover. It's the only long position I have. Yes. Uh, the index in it's in is way down uh, and it's flat. Okay. But it's got 12, 12 days to cover. Right. And if, if you don't know much about shorting, uh, days to cover is whatever the last average volume is for the last 30 days. If the shorts just wanted to get out, how long uh, how long would it take? And, and nobody else buying. So days to cover is what I uh, use mostly. Um, a lot of people look at sure. how many shares are outstanding. Unfortunately, that's wrong a lot and long and wrong for months uh, upon months before they get it updated many times. So I really like days to cover. But uh, like Clovis, which was the big stock this week. Yeah, Clo yep, uh, right. Well, you know, you get the bi-monthly from uh, the NASDAQ and the NYSE. Twice a month you get uh, the report, and that report is probably 10 or 11 days old. But Clovis, 24 days to cover. Um, again, I think we started talking about this in January with just the massive shorting of a lot of these, uh, just a handful of stocks. But certainly you don't want to be short. Uh, but uh, if you start seeing a squeeze come, you know there's a lot of people that have to get out of the way. And it, there's nothing like having the wind at your back and a short squeeze to make a lot of money very quickly. And hopefully we get uh, we hit that right next week. Yeah. Oh, there's, 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 there's no doubt. There's no doubt. So we have, we have an hour workshop. It's on the Wednesday, which is really cool, folks, because what ends up happening it always seems like, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday, you get some high volatility anyway, you know, right before option expiration. And, you know, the bottom line is that we'll see how this baby lays out. But uh, so you get a full hour. You're going to you're going to walk through people through uh, sectors, uh, basically, uh, and, and basically option trades as to uh, what do you think is going to hit on that white light then, right? Right. Yeah, in fact, I've got a uh, chart that I, I have just for... Um, options to show you where the option market makers are yes. there's about eight basic patterns uh that you can look at and they'll tell you what the option market makers are thinking maybe it's it goes between here and there maybe they're going to pin it exactly um uh, we talk about apple many times pinning on fridays i'm looking to see how close it hits to one uh 27.50 today um and why a little pin those so if you can catch them early in the day when you know they're going to pin them and you can be on the right side of a uh, of an option where it goes from out of the money into the money. Those are the ones where you get uh, a dime or a quarter option and you turn it into a buck or a buck fifty. 
Um, and those uh, those are really good days uh, to have. And of course, when you do that, you don't always have to be right. You can be right 50% of the time or even less oh, and sure. still make money over time. And you don't have to you don't have to be perfect. And I what's amazing, folks, way. when Dave talks about pinning it, it, it is amazing to me that even let's say we're talking $127 stock in Apple's case, that option market makers, you're going to be so surprised how they can get it right to the number, man, so many times. And what that means when it's pinned is that the most amount of calls as well as puts lose money, folks, okay? And it's, so it's really cool understanding what the pin is so that you can basically trade around that whole thing or trade right at it. I mean, trade. It, it, the, the, the key is having the information, understanding it. It really is wild how this shakes out, Dave. Well, the option market makers tend to be the best traders there are on Wall Street. If they weren't, they'd be broke fairly quickly. Yes. Um, so they, they tend to know it. And, of course, the other thing is they know where the bodies are buried. Well, they know yeah, where they, know, the they know where the autos are. There's no doubt. Right. Yeah, right. So they know more than us. And why they're not always right, they tend to be uh, uh, pretty much right m most of the time. Um, they're kind of like uh, paramutual betting. They need to be right about 85% of the time, and that pretty much holds up. There's been some surveys that 90% of uh, options go uh, unexercised at the end. Um, it's more like 85, but they pretty much have the same model. So if you know where the most are going to uh, expire worthless, generally that's where they're going to try to drive the market with worthless upgrades and downgrades, news, uh, and occasionally even throwing money at the problem. Yeah, and they just suck in all that premium. Take it away. Yep. Listen, folks, very easy to get into Dave's workshop. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see the path right on the front page. Just hit that button. Get the newsletter. You're going to get a great newsletter. That comes out first thing Monday morning, as well as a great workshop on Wednesday. And you'll be growling and prowling in that option market. Dave, you have a great weekend, safe weekend. We look forward to the show on Monday. See you then. See you then, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one.